Uh, Hubbard Parker. Oh, H U B B A R D. All right, Mr. Parker, just make sure you stay focused uh, or near that microphone so we can all hear your voice, okay? Sure. All right, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Parker. Good afternoon. Can you tell the jury what you do for a living, sir? I'm a barber. How long have you been a barber? 40 years. And where do uh, you own your barbershop? Yes. How long have you owned your barbershop? 35 years. And what part of the city is your barbershop? Atlanta. Uh, is your barbershop on McDaniel Street? Yes. And is it on 330 McDaniel Street? Yes. How long have you uh, owned a barbershop at 330 McDaniel Street? 30 years. And now, do you know some of the other businesses that are around your shop? Sure. Um, what is, is there any other barbershops nearby? Yes. Are they, uh, are you friendly with them or are they the competition? No, I'm friendly. What, who owns the other barbershop? Uh, Mr. George. Is Mr. George still with us today? No, he deceased. Um, were you close with him? Yes, I usually work with him. Do you know uh, do the barbers that work in your shop and the barbers in Mr. George's shop, are you all friendly with each other? Yes. Now, back in uh, <clears throat> January 10th of 2015, what color was your barbershop? Green. Uh, is it green today? No. When did it get repainted? Probably a year or so. Now, can you describe the jury inside your barber shop? How many chairs do you have? Six. And if I were to walk in the front door of your barber shop, would the Daniel Street be behind me? Sure. And what is the barber chair that you uh, use? Is it close to the front door or in the back? In the back. Uh, is there a barber chair in your shop that um, used to be your father's? Yes. Where's that barber chair shop? Uh, ne next to my, my chair. And um, typically, if you yourself were working or in the barber shop, would you be at that back uh, barber chair that you work at? Yes. Now, is that the best vantage point in that shop to see what's going on in the shop? <laughs> exactly. Uh, does it sit up a little bit higher than the rest of the shop? Yes. And now, if you're standing there um, and someone comes in the front door, can you see them? Sure. Back in 2015, were you able to see much outside of your barbershop windows? Sure. Uh, did you have any burglar bars on the window? Yes. And can you tell the jury back on in 2015, or have your hours changed much since you've been uh, owning and working at that barbershop, sir? Yes. What were your hours back on January 10th, 2015? From 9 to like 8.30. Okay. And now how many days a week would you shop here? About six. Do um, you typically take the same day off each week? Not really. Different days. Now, would people ever uh, hang out either before or after getting a haircut at your barbershop? No, not in my barbershop, around the barbershop, yes. Where would people tend to congregate around your barbershop? On the outside. Okay. Now, um, what was the parking like at your barbershop? If, so if I was coming to get a haircut by you, where would I park? Well, on, um, on the right side of the barbershop. Is the right side, is that toward Mr. George's barbershop? No. Is that towards, uh, is there a Texaco? Texaco, right? yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that parking lot between your shop and the Texaco is where customers would park? Yes. Who would park between you and Mr. George's barbershop? Um, I guess anyone. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Now, did you ever know someone by the name Peanut or Nut? Yes. Um, how did you know them? From coming out to Mr. George's barbershop. So would Peanut typically get his haircut at Mr. George's shop? Yes. But you used to work there, so did you know him? Um, I had just met him recently, though. Uh, but you, did you know of him? I heard of him. Now, is he still alive today? No. Uh, where were you uh, the night that he passed away? At the barbershop. Were you at 330 Daniel Street? Yes. So can you tell the jury, <coughs> break down that you know, afternoon or early night for me, was that... 
Was there anything unusual about that day at the barbershop? No. Um, were you... Uh, was there any sport events going on that day? Yeah, I think we were watching um, Super Bowl or something. Does, was that January 10, 2015? Sure. And um, that evening, did you have any other barbers working with you? Sure. Um, how crowded was your barbershop that day? Pretty crowded. And how did you first learn something happened? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> like, like what, did you see something, hear something? How did you know? Oh, I just heard something. And, and what did you hear? Like some firecrackers. When you first heard the firecrackers, mm -hmm. uh, did you hear it sound like one firecracker or multiple? Like multiple. And what was your initial reaction when you heard what sounded like firecrackers? Just somebody shooting, I mean, out there playing around with some firecrackers at first. What made you change uh, thinking initially it was just firecrackers? Because everybody started running <laughs> outside. Did, what did you do? Did you run? Yes. I mean, I ain't wrong. I just <laughs> laid guy down on the shop. When you first heard it, were you in the spot, the spot of your barbershop that we talked about in the very back? Yes. Um, did people, was there people between you and the front door of your barbershop? What do you mean? Like, uh, was there other people in your shop when you heard this? Sure. And did you all run towards the back of your shop? Yes. Well, we all got on the floor of my shop. Now, um, after that, did you ever uh, call for help or call 911? Uh, no. Someone else did, I think. Okay. Yes, the police over here on the north side of McDaniel. North side of McDaniel. Why did you say that? Yeah. And Harold living in the barbershop. Somebody don't got shot. Confident we'll still hang up. Well, mama said, do not hang up. Miss Parker, was that you on that call? Yes, they do sound like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is your barber shop today and back then, uh, hair barber unlimited? Yeah, what you mean, hair, hair barber? Uh, what's your barber shop called? Hair unlimited. Hair unlimited. Yes. Um, is it possible you would use someone else's phone when you call around the world? Probably did. They dialed a hat to me or something, yeah, because I don't remember you picking it up, calling from my phone. That, that's fair. Was yeah. it hectic or chaotic um, uh, after when everybody started running in the shop after what you heard? No, it was just chaotic. Everybody just, you know, on the floor. Now, after making that 911 call, sir, did EMS or police ever arrive to your shop? Um, or was it that area? Well, later. Later yeah. Um, did you, what did you do after making that call? Like, were people, uh, did you go outside? Did you stay in the shop? Do you remember what you did after making that 911 call for help? No. That's all right. Don't recall. Was mm. anyone that you were aware of that was inside your shop uh, shot? No. Um, did you have any uh, bullet holes in the outside of the building? Sure. Uh, did you have, uh, how many would you have to ballpark that you had? Uh, I can't recall. Sorry. Mr. Parker, are you older or younger in this photograph? Older. You're older in the photograph that you looked at? Yeah, now. Oh, yeah. 2015. You're, you're looking better now? Is that it? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no harm, if that's, if that's what you want to go with. Don't yeah. Worry. Sure. Ms. Parker, it's a bad question. You're, that <laughs> photograph is taken to you a while ago. Is that sure, right? yes. Um, does it seem to be about how you would look in 2015? Sure. Um, Your Honor, at this time, the state pretender and evidence takes exhibit 292 Yankee Echo in evidence. Any further objection? All right. State's 292 Yankee Echoes admitted, maybe published as you see fit. Publishing said exhibit, Your Honor. So, Mr. Parker, the jury's going to get to see what you were talking about. So, it's going to, you have it in front of you, but mm -hmm. can you point out to the jury which one of these two individuals is yourself? The short guy. In, in, in the bottom left? <laughs> yes. Okay. And is that from the vantage point, or is this, is this one of your surveillance videos that you have in your shop? Sure. And is your barbershop, when we were talking about, 
basically, are you standing at where your chair would be? Sure. Um, do you you see that all you can see is but you see the gentleman standing beside you? Sure. You see how there's someone sitting behind him with gray sweatpants? Yes. Is that your father? Sure. Um, is that his chair? Sure. And that's your front door and the very back of it. Sure. Right now, yeah. Mr. Parker, do you recall giving any members of Atlanta Police Department surveillance video back in 2015, sometime after when Peanut was killed? Did I what now? Do you remember ever giving at some point after Nut was killed surveillance video from your shop? No, I don't remember that. Okay. Now, Ms. Parker, is this the front of your shop? Sure. And for customers or people coming and going, is that the, the door that they would use, your front door? Sure. And before the night that Nut was killed, did your front door have bullet holes in it like it's depicted in this photograph? No. Did it after the night he was killed? Yes. Did you ever have to ultimately get those fixed? My dad did. Did he fix it himself? I guess he had somebody. Mr. Parker, is this the inside of the barbershop? Sure. That's your chair in the back? Sure. Is that fair? Uh, yeah. And was there people, so do you see those chairs in the bottom right of this photograph? Like, a, are those customer chairs? What you mean in the like bottom? They're, they're not barber chairs. Where, you mean the black, uh, the black chairs? Correct. Yes. Uh, is that where people who were waiting to get a haircut, would they sit in those chairs? Sure. And... Um, the night that you called 911, was there people in that area of your barbershop? Yes. And was there people sitting in your in these bar chairs? Yes. Okay. And, Ms. Parker, I'm going to use this pointer because uh, I'm old school and I may mess up the tech. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to just... Are, are these, when I was talking about the black chairs in your shop, is, mm -hmm. what I, is this what you were talking about? Yeah. And with barber chairs, we were talking about these. Yes. Yeah. And so the night on, that night that Nut was killed, there was people in both of those chairs. Is that fair? I can't remember. And is this another view of those chairs where, this is the group of chairs where guests or customers would sit? Is sure. that fair? Sure. Um, and this is McDaniel Street out here, right? Sure. Did any of your windows, do you remember ever having to fix any of your windows after the shooting? Sure. Uh, do you remember which of these two you had to fix? Like, would it have been this one or this one? It would be that one. This one? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to publish State's Exhibit 135, I think. So this other photograph, Ms. Parker, is this window we were just talking about, the one you had to get fixed? Sure. And uh, is that the bullet hole you had to fix? Sure. Now, back then, was there a TV? Did you have any TVs in the shop? Yes. Um, if I was sitting in one of those customer chairs, where would be the closest TV I could look? Uh, I mean, um, in front of you. So if I was this cameraman, would the TV be somewhere up here? Yeah, over in the corner. Okay. Now, if there ever was a big sport event playing, would you have... Football, baseball, basketball, something on if it was a big sport event. Sure, right? yes. And in this exhibit, is that your TV in the upper left corner, Mr. Parker? Or, or, or you have one in both corners? Left sure. Corner. Now,
now. Your, your Honor, I'm going to publish what's already been admitted as two, <laughs> 293 Yankee chart. All right. 293 Yankee chart. Your Honor, the technical difficulties. The state has no more questions for Mr. Parker at this time. Thank All you, right. sir.